tuned in to the Community Cats Podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats Podcast. I'm your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. And today is part one of an audio masterclass of a webinar that we do with neighborhood cats called Drop Trap, a trapper's best friend. Uh, this is the audio portion of that webinar. Um, if you would like to see the video, feel free to go to communitycatspodcast.com, click on virtual education, and that'll take you right where you need to go for the video or check the show notes and we'll have a specific link right there in the show notes for you. Please enjoy this audio masterclass, Drop Trap, A Trapper's Best Friend, part one. First thing I would like to do is say a big thank you to our sponsor, which is Tomahawk Live Trap. They sponsor all of our presentations. So they really are a great supporters of ours. And I'm gonna give you a secret, DCNC22. DCNC22 is a special code, which will get you a 10% off discount. Many products at Tomahawk Live Trap. So you can find them at livetrap.com. They're an incredible organization. Uh, Neighborhood Cats, Brian and Susie have worked with the team at Tomahawk Live Trap to really create some incredible trapping equipment, traps that work really well and really ensure that you're able to trap cats in a smooth and safe way. So big shout out and thank you to Tomahawk Live Trap. Now I'm going to turn to the presentation. And so I want to introduce uh, Susie Richmond, who is the executive director of Neighborhood Cats. She joined the organization after over 20 years running a major New York City shelter and nonprofit veterinary clinic. At Neighborhood Cats, she has led multiple large targeted TNR projects in New York City, northern New Jersey, and managed a program for providing scholarships to veterinarians for training in high volume spay neuter of community cats and co-authored the Humane Society of the United States online course on TNR in her spare time. She can often be found trapping feral cats on Maui. And then we have Brian Cordes. He is the co-founder and national programs director for Neighborhood Cats, a leading community cat advocacy group with hands on programs in New York City, New Jersey and Maui. Currently, he and his wife, Susie Richmond, live in Hawaii and can usually be found trapping cats or leasing them after they've been neutered. In between stints with Neighborhood Cats, he served as a grants manager for PetSmart Charities, overseeing over $21 million in TNR and spay-neuter projects. He's produced many of the leading educational materials on trap, neuter, return, including award-winning books and videos. He's assisted numerous communities in setting up large-scale TNR programs and is a frequent presenter on community cat issues. Brian has a Bachelor of Arts degree from Cornell University and a JD from the University of California, Berkeley. Thank you so much, Stacy, And thank you, everybody out there for attending today. And today's presentation will kind of offer uh, something for everybody. The first part of the presentation is uh, geared towards the basics. So for those of you who have never used a drop trap before or just used it sparingly, we're going to kind of go over the basics so you're doing everything correctly. And then we'll go into more advanced stuff. And I'm fairly confident those of you who, even those of you who have trapped 50 or more, will pick up a tip or two that, that will help you with your drop trapping. Okay, so let's get into the heart of what we're talking about today. And the first thing is, well, you know, what is a drop trap? It's basically this idea of a box propped up on a stick with a string tied around it and put some food under it. The cat goes under and you pull the string and the stick makes the box drop on top of the cat. It's really nothing more complicated than that. This is an actual drop trap, that the drop trap that's manufactured by Tomahawk Live Trap. It's the model DT1. You can see it's it's square in shape. It's 36 inches uh, width and length. It's about, not about, exactly 14 inches high. And on the left, you can see that's what it looks like folded out. And on the right, you can see it folds down into kind of a suitcase style. And the parts of it that we'll be talking about a lot are the anchor flap, which you see is on the ground in the back there. And that's something you put weight on in order to keep the drop trap in place after you've caught a cat so the cat doesn't drag the trap away. The side door is how you get the cat out of the drop trap once you've caught them. You're gonna transfer through that door into a, a normal box trap. And the prop stick is what you use to raise the trap up. Tomahawk makes two different models of drop traps. 
The one we're going to be focused on exclusively is the DT1. It weighs 14 pounds, which is 6.3 kilograms for those of you outside the U.S. This one's three foot square, the one that we favor. They also make a model that's four foot square. That's the DT2, and that weighs 26 pounds, so almost twice as much weight. And we do not recommend that, unless you're very, very experienced at this, we don't recommend that you get the DT2. And the reason for that is we just think it's pretty dangerous because mistakes happen, especially if you're inexperienced. And if you pull the string too soon, the trap can land on the cat as they're trying to escape. Of course, that extra foot what people would say is that extra foot of space might prevent that, which is true, but we think the risk of injury is is too great. And we find the three foot square trap, if you use it properly, is going to do the trick most of the time. And those kinds of mishaps, they sometimes happen when you're trying to trap more than one cat at a time, but they're pretty infrequent too. So, you know, our recommendation is stick with the smaller one. You can also, if you like to build things yourself, you can make your own drop trap, which is what we used to do before we had Tomahawk mass manufacturing them. So there's a couple of designs out there that you can access online. There's one by Dr. Lisa Pearson, who's a veterinarian who designed a drop trap that you make out of PVC piping that can fold up. That one's also pretty heavy, but again, you might be able to modify it to make it a little lighter. There's also one that is non-foldable, meaning it's, it remains three foot square, and you can access that at a blog called the Drop Trap Design Bank has the plans for building that. We took the non-foldable wood design and we hinged two of the sides so that we could fold it. So it didn't make for the sturdiest drop trap in the world, but it still worked pretty well. The problem is that it's very hard to clean these do-it-yourself drop traps. You can't take this wooden piece of equipment and spray it with rescue or dip it in a bleach solution or anything like that. So they tend to be very hard to keep clean. And then when you add up the amount of time to build it and the materials, most people find that just buying the mass manufactured one is a better value. But you don't have to go that route. So let's get into why to use a drop trap versus a box trap. And the reason is because Cats are just less wary of going under something like a drop trap rather than into something like a box trap. And that's what we call the standard trap. That's a box trap. So long and narrow, unless you're using a clear rear door, kitty knows there's only one way out. They have to be extra hungry in order to get them to go inside a box trap. And that you can see this kitty here is really seriously thinking about whether this is worth the uh, tasty bait at the back of that box trap. With um, a drop trap, I guess uh, from a cat psychology point of view, since they're going under something, there's more than one way out. There's, there's multiple exit routes. So you're not entering this narrow confined space with only one exit. And because they're less afraid of drop traps, you don't need them to be as hungry in order to catch them. So you can use a drop trap, you know, for example, to outsmart an uncooperative feeder by trapping prior to their normal feeding time. Or let's say you can't identify who's feeding a colony of cats or a cat, then you just have to go make sure you go early enough before any food shows up. So as long as they didn't eat that day, there's a very good chance they'll go under. If you can withhold the food, all the better. But that's the beauty of it. They're not as afraid to go under and they don't need to be as hungry. So what are some of the uses for drop traps? Well, probably the most popular one is what we call targeted or selective trapping. That's when there's a bunch of cats, but there's a particular one or bunch that you want to catch first. So there may be a pregnant cat that you want to get before she comes to term, maybe a mom and kittens, and you want to try to catch them as a group, you may have an injured cat, a sick cat. Maybe you've TNR'd your colony, but there's one or two left and you need to pick them out. Maybe there's a newcomer. So we'll show you. They're very good for selective trapping. They're also great for cats, following what we were just talking about, who just won't go in a box trap, no matter how hungry you make them. There are occasionally cats out there who are just extremely wary to the point that they're untrappable in a normal trap. And they may take a couple of times of seeing the drop trap before they learn to trust it. But that's how we catch those really, really difficult cats most of the time. Another way we'll talk about later in the session today to use the drop trap is if you've got 
cats who do what we call cluster eating, meaning a whole bunch of them cluster around a plate at mealtime and eat out of the same plate. Well, you can use that tendency to catch large numbers of them at the start of a mass trapping where you're trying to trap all the cats in the colony at the same time. I think we once set up three drop traps in a row in, in the first 20 minutes of a mass trapping. We caught 13 cats right away. Now, on the other side of that, when you're doing a mass trapping, so let's say you're trying to catch 12 cats uh, all on the same night. It used to be, you know, we put out all the traps, maybe we'd get like 10 of them if we were doing well, and there'd be one or two left who just wouldn't go in. So the standard thing to do is, well, withhold food for another day and come back tomorrow and try again. What we do now is before we pack up for the night, we take, we break out the drop trap because usually at least one or two of those last ones will go under the drop trap that same evening and we'll end up just saving some time. And drop traps are so effective that there are trappers out there who just use them only and don't use box traps except to transfer the cats out of the drop trap, but they don't put traps out. They just put the drop trap out and they kind of hang out in their car with holding onto a string and just catch one after another. We'll get into how to use one, the basics. And the first thing you're gonna have to do is obviously put it together. So don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on that because Tomahawk has a great video on how to do it. You can also access it off their website or YouTube. And it's really easy. The first time you do it, it may seem like a little clunky. You're not familiar with the parts. But once you know how to do it, it literally takes like a minute to two minutes to put the whole thing together. I want to give you one tip, though, and this is good for the uh, experienced people as well, is as you're putting it together and you're attaching the roof onto the main frame, you want to count the number of hooks that you're attaching there are these things called spring clips, but you pull them up from the main frame and they attach onto the roof. And there's two on each of the four sides. So make sure you count to eight and that you've got all the spring clips attached to the roof. Because if you miss one and a cat is trying to squeeze his way through the roof, uh, he's gonna be able to create an opening and potentially get out the corner. In order to avoid that, just make sure you count to eight. Okay, so I'm going to show you a very simple drop trapping of one cat, this kitten who showed up in a, about a 20 cat colony. When we were drop trapping this kitty, we didn't know whether he'd be the first one in or the 20th one in. So when you're doing selective trapping, you have to leave a very large plate of food so that everybody can come and have a bite in case that happens before your target cat shows up. And then we will break it down. So the first thing for those of you who have not used the drop trap is practice. And I don't mean 16 times, I mean just once. Don't use this piece of equipment for the very first time on the cat you've been trying to catch for five years. Make sure you practice both dropping the trap on a cat so that you get the timing correct and especially practice the transfer because that's when things go wrong for people using this for the first time. You can try it on a cat who's already been fixed. Maybe you want to update his vaccinations, or you could just say sorry and practice on him, transfer him, and then let him go. You could even try doing it on your pet cat who, you know, of course, is going to be too happy about it. So, you know, maybe give him a big treat afterwards. But if you just go through the process once, the chances of making a mistake out in the field are much, much less. So preparations. So it's always like with any trapping, it's good to have a feeding pattern. That's particularly important. So when we were trapping that tabby kitten, whose name is Wonka, we didn't just put the drop trap out and hope that he would show up. We knew that they came to eat at dusk every day. So we were there 20 minutes before dusk to set up. If the cats are on a feeding pattern, obviously you can predict when they're going to be there. Now, if you can withhold food for 24 hours, that just makes it that much more likely that the cats are going to go under the drop trap, but at least withhold the food for that same day. So if they're used to eating at 5 p.m. and you're trapping on Friday, go ahead and feed them on Thursday at 5 p.m., but don't feed them Friday morning or until the trapping is over. So you might be able to get entice them under the drop trap if, even if they ate that day. If you have something like really smelly like sardines or something they just want as a tasty snack, but your chances are much better if they're, it's their normal feeding time and they're at their normal level of hunger for that day. Scout the location where you're going to trap. These are the things you're looking for. You need good visibility so you can see when to uh, drop the trap. 
unless you're using a drop trap pad, which is a, something we'll talk about a bit later, you want a flat surface. So when the trap lands, you don't want any gaps that a cat can stick his nose through or his paw and then potentially lift the trap up or squeeze out from underneath it. You want to be near the feeding area or right in it. Wonka got transferred into a box trap, so you need enough space on the side where the side door of the drop trap is to put a box trap. Sometimes uh, you can get around that. If you just can't put it in a spot with enough room, what you do is after the cat is caught, you very slowly and carefully rotate the drop trap until the side door is at a place where you can transfer. But if you do have the option, it's much easier just to leave enough space on the side. And then make sure there's enough perimeter space around the edges of the drop trap so that if a cat is caught, even with the anchor weight on the back, which is going to hopefully keep it from moving, but just in case it's a very strong tomcat or something like that, you don't want them to be able to push the trap over the edge of something like a curb or a porch and then be able to kind of escape out the bottom. So leave a couple of feet, if you can, around. If you're trapping on something that, that is anywhere near an edge, keep the drop trap a couple of feet away from it. Here's an equipment list for you. We won't go over everything, but you know you can print this out and have it with you. Let's see if there's anything to point out in particular. Yeah, ha trap dividers are really handy for any trapping, but with drop traps, sometimes uh, when the cats don't want to move into the uh, transfer cage, uh, having a trap divider to kind of scoot them in that direction can be very handy. Oh, one last thing is that for well, having a second person is really very helpful, especially for the transfer, because somebody is on one side of the trap, the, the cat's likely to run the other direction. So that can be very helpful. So baiting the trap, as I mentioned, if you're trying to pick out one cat from a crowd of cats, you want to put a lot of food in there. And one tip uh, for all of you, including you experts, is try to use a bowl or a dish that the cats are used to eating out of. And that little bit of familiarity may be the difference in getting them to go under and catching them quickly. So we always try to get whatever bowl or dish the caretaker usually uses. And um, even if it's not optimal, like this particular dish you see here is a little larger than I would like, but that's what they were used to eating out of. And we want them to not feel like there's anything all that different. Make sure it's not breakable because uh, they can get kind of frantic dashing back and forth once they remember they're caught. So you don't want anything that can hurt them. There's two schools of thought on what kind of bait to use. Some trappers just like to use the normal food that the cats get in order to, again, maintain that routine, that sense of everything is fine and normal here. There's nothing unusual about this. Other trappers like ourselves, we like to add something particularly enticing like tuna or sardines or roasted chicken. But you could try one if that's not working, try, try the other way. People have had success with both. Make sure the bowl is in the back of the trap and it's centered. That gives you um, the cat the most space that they have to run to get out once the trap starts to drop. Sprinkle just a very slight trail of bait Again, a little extra enticement for the cat to go under. Okay, last steps before you get ready to go. Position, this is especially important if you're drop trapping on your own. Make sure the box trap or transfer cage that you're going to transfer the cat into is within arm's reach of the drop trap or at least very nearby and the sheet that you're going to use to cover the box trap. Then make sure you move far enough away so that kitties are not um, are comfortable with you being in the area, or we like to sit in the car where they can't even see us. Have the blanket or large sheet you're gonna use to cover the drop trap by your side so you can just grab it and run over. When you're ready to have the string set to go, the trick is for the string to be taut, not on a hair trigger where if you like move your arm up you know, a centimeter, all of a sudden you're gonna pull the trap down. We've made that mistake. If you do this drop trapping enough, you'll make every mistake possible. But uh, if it's on too much of a hair trigger, you could drop it too soon. But on the other hand, if it's too loose and there's a hitch in your motion, that split second could be enough for the cat to escape. So the trick is to have it taut just enough so that you could jerk your arm back and the thing's going to drop. And then uh, be patient. The biggest trick in all this is to wait for the cat to be engaged with the food. So a common mistake 
for beginners is they get too anxious, like the cat goes under and they're all excited and they're like, oh, this is my big chance. And they pull the string too soon and the cat's still tense. And you'd be amazed at how quickly they can move. They won't be able to escape if their head's in the food and they're engaged in eating. So in this particular trapping, we were after this kitty eating in the trap. It's already ear tipped. And we were after this white kitty in the red circle there. And this is often a good thing when the cat you're after sees another cat eating in the drop trap, that just makes them feel a little more secure. So eventually the kitty in the trap had her fill and ours went under. Now, this is too soon to pull the string. And that's because you could look at kitty's body language. She's tense. She's still slightly moving. She's checking out the food, but she's not fully engaged in it. If she walks away before she is fully engaged, you're better off letting her walk away and wait for her to come back than you are pulling too soon. Because if you pull the string too soon and she escapes, now she's learned not to go under the drop trap. So it's better to let them wander off and try again another day than to lose her. So now is the time to pull. Her position is relaxed. Her mouth is fully in the food. She's just into, she's not paying attention to anything else right now except the food. So this is when you would pull. And notice how taut that string is, right? It's ready to go. So here we are. This is the moment of the pulling. And you can see how the trap hasn't even hit the ground yet, but the cat is on the move to try to escape. So we're talking like split seconds here. And that's why it's so important to wait for the right moment to pull the string. And it's easy to tell. Always err on the side of like, oh, she walked away. I didn't pull it in time. Make sure that they're eating and you'll be fine. Do you want to cover the trap quickly? We like to use a blanket because it's a little heavier, makes it a little easier to cover quickly. But you can see here, our trapper was using a large sheet and that's it's fine too. So then you have to do the transfer when you've got the drop trap on top of the kitty. And what you're going to do is line up the rear door. You need a box trap that has a guillotine style rear door. And we'll show you how you can use different sizes, but it has to have a rear door that slides up, which any good trap should have. So you line that up, the rear door of the box trap with the side door of the drop trap. Now, here's a mistake that I made. I was figured um, as long as I have the box trap out there, I might as well set it, right? Just in case maybe the cat will go into the regular trap instead of the drop trap. Then I drop trap the cat lined everything up, had it perfectly in position, did the transfer and watched the cat running off into the distance because I forgot to close the front door of the box trap. So in general, I just don't do that anymore. I don't set the box trap because in the heat of the moment, you can make that mistake. But if you do, just look at the front door and make sure that it's closed. The drop trap has eight spring clips that attach onto the roof of the drop trap. But there's two extras by the side door, and they're meant to attach onto the trap you're transferring into. And this is just a great, simple innovation because it prevents, uh, as the transfer is happening, it prevents the traps from shifting in a way that creates a gap that a cat can get through. So make sure before you lift any of the doors that the spring clips are in place. They don't have to go very far back. You don't want to make them too tight, or you won't be able to lift the doors up if the two traps are pressed against each other too hard. When you're doing the transfer, you're covering the sides of the box trap, but you're leaving the furthest end, which is going to be the front of the trap, open. From the cat's point of view, they see daylight at the end of the box trap, and that's what you want. You want them to think that this is the exit. So don't cover the end of the trap, the furthest end of the box trap. Leave that uncovered, but cover everything else so it looks like a little tunnel. Then you're going to raise the drop trap side door and the box trap rear door at the same time. Try to stay out of sight of the cat. Remember, we're trying to make them think this is an exit, but if they see you standing there, that's going to have the opposite effect. So try to keep the drop trap on the sides of the side door covered and stand over the box trap and don't let them uh, see you. So this is a better example of what the transfer looks like. So you can see the trap that Kitty's going to go into is entirely covered except for the rear and the sides of the drop trap are covered as well so that the cat can't see me and when the doors are raised the one bit of daylight they're going to see is that end of the box trap and nine out of ten times they're just going to go uh, running right into it and you won't have any problems 
So once the cat's in, you know, shut and lock the box trap or your door. If there's more than one cat in the drop trap, you're going to do this process one at a time. So make sure you also close the drop trap side door and then just keep going. You know, if you've got six cats in the drop trap, you're just going to go one at a time. Disengage the spring clips, fully cover the box trap, and again, repeat the process for any more cats. Sometimes you'll catch two cats and you know one of them's already fixed because they're ear tipped. Don't try to like let one of them out quickly. Even for the ear tipped cat, until you have the cat who isn't fixed in a box trap, you've got to go through this process, even for the ones that are already fixed. So what if the cat won't go in? It does happen. Most of the time, they zip right in. But you know, a fair percentage of the time, they don't. So here's a couple of tricks. Did you notice when Susie was doing the transfer and she started to pull the blanket towards her, uh, the blanket that was covering the drop trap? And that's because feral cats tend to move from light to dark. When they're captured, they like to be covered. So when you start to pull the cover off the drop trap, they try to stay under the part that is not exposed, and that moves them naturally moves them towards your box trap. So you can have a second. You can also have a second person bend down and look at them on the opposite side and get them to run away into the box trap. You could try spritzing them with just a little bit of water. You can move an object towards them like a stick, but don't touch them. It's too much risk of injury. Just something coming at them is enough usually to scare them. Also, you can use, like I said, trap dividers to try to push them in that way. And I I should mention Tomahawk now makes uh, trap dividers, especially for drop traps. They're 18 inches wide. So two of them covers the width of a 36 inch drop trap. So we always have a pair of those in the car now too. And you usually don't need them, but sometimes it kind of hastens the process. And, and that's the last tip, which is if you're by yourself, nothing you've tried is working. Just expose the drop trap fully and wait. Eventually, your cat will go in, hopefully sooner than later. Now, here's a little trick that one of our last drop trap webinar attendees sent this to us. She does this in case there's a couple of cats and they're concerned that the second cat is too close to the edge and the drop trap might fall on them, whether they want to catch them or not. And and we've had a few people send this tip in. They use a piece of chalk to outline exactly where the drop trap's going to fall. So that takes away some of the guesswork. And if you're on grass or something soft, you can use flour. For those of you who are experienced, probably don't need to do this, but if it's helpful, go right ahead. And, And if you're doing this for the first time and you feel like this will make it a little bit easier for you to judge, then go right ahead. It's a great tip. Ever wanted to quickly connect, collaborate, or problem solve with others in the animal welfare field who are, you know, real people? Look no further than Maddie's Pet Forum. Maddie's Pet Forum brings people of animal welfare together with the common goal to keep more people and pets together. We share ideas, expertise, offer each other support, resources, and more. Visit forum.maddiespetforum.org slash cats. Maddie's Pet Forum. Come for an answer. Stay for the community. It's 87 degrees outside, which means it could be more than 110 degrees inside your car. However, in most states, it's illegal to rescue animals or children from hot cars. But with only minutes to spare, many choose to rescue animals from cars at their own risk. And many owners choose gratitude. Never leave pets or children unattended in a car. Because a few minutes is never a few minutes, and minutes may be all they have. This PSA is brought to you by Companion and Animals for Reform and Equity. Team Dubert is at it again, and now they have an amazing companion case management module that once again revolutionizes how you rescue animals. Dubert partnered with Dallas Pets Alive and the Spay Neuter Network to build a powerful solution that allows you to manage cases of any kind. Whether owner surrender calls or emails, community cat tracking and reporting, Dubert is the only system that integrates two way text messaging, automatic follow ups, and even a rehoming solution that every organization can use. No more trying to manage 10 different technologies when everything is all in one place and tightly integrated. From fostering to transport, fundraising to e-commerce, supply and demand to case management, Dubert has everything you need to streamline your operations so you can focus on saving more animals. Check out the new companion case management module at www.dubert.com slash CCM and get signed up today. Now, what if it's really windy and you're some distance away? 
what you'll see is the string uh, starts blowing around in the wind and that can make it hard to keep the string taut, right? So this is a very simple way to solve that problem, which is you get a lightweight piece of wood, nothing too heavy, but just heavy enough to weigh the string down so that it won't blow around, it won't go swinging way to the side in a heavy wind, but it'll stay in place and it won't take more than just a tiny bit more effort for you when you pull the string to get the trap to come down. So if you're if you're dealing in windy conditions, we always keep a little piece of wood like this in the car for those occasionally really windy days. Now we're going to get into some of the more advanced stuff. So what if you're trapping on uneven ground, like it's out in the woods, it's full of divots, there's like no way in the world a drop trap is going to fall flat on that and not create openings that a cat can get out from under. So we actually were drop trapping in this very location and had to solve that problem. So um, this is what we came up with. We call it the drop trap pad. And it's basically creating a stable surface for the drop trap to fall down on. It's made out of two pieces of half inch thick plywood. And I will say that it's heavy, probably a good 35, 40 pounds is my guess. We haven't tested it yet, but we have had a look at quarter inch of thick plywood. And I think you might be able to get away with that. It won't be quite as sturdy, but it might be enough. So if this uh, half inch plywood is just too heavy and bulky, you can give the quarter inch a try and let us know how it goes. So you've got two pieces of plywood, each measuring two feet by four feet. So when you put them together with hinges, you've got a four foot by four foot surface. And basically the drop trap is attached at the back. So that gives you about one foot clearance. Well, I'm sorry, six inches on the side and a foot in front of room, but you're attaching the drop trap onto this. So it can't really shift anywhere. So it works quite well. You want to use a neutral colored deck paint so that it blends in with the surroundings. You're going to use these uh, two hinges, six inches from the edge to attach. And then after you've attached the hinges, that's when you paint everything. Some of you out there are probably handy and are going to come up with a better way to do this and just let us know what you come up with. What we're doing right now is we drill a couple of holes in each corner and we put a zip tie, a cable tie through to create loops. And then we take uh, another cable tie and go through the loop that's in the drop trap head. We take that orange cable tie and attach the back of the drop trap to these on, in each corner. And notice how with the orange cable tie, we're not pulling it tight. If you pull it too tight, the trap might not fall down. So you have to leave a little bit of room, but not so much that once the cat's in the trap, they could drag the trap more than you know half an inch or so. Now, if the ground is flat, but it's soft and it's rocky, Another great tip that a viewer sent in, and we've actually done this ourselves, is put the prop stick on something smooth uh, that will prevent it from sinking into the ground. So here you can see we used a, a French fry plate or what's known as a food boat, which is a kind of waxy. It still sinks a bit into the ground, the weight of the drop trap pushing the prop stick down. But when we pull, the prop stick is gonna go across a smooth surface you can also use what might be even better as a piece of cardboard, a good sturdy piece of cardboard. So if you're on grass or you're on this kind of rocky terrain, it will prevent the prop stick from sinking into the ground. And it will also prevent like it getting stuck on some rock or something that, that you didn't see. People have also liked doing this even on a surface where the prop stick wouldn't sink because it's quieter. So it gives the cat a split second less warning that something's happening. But, you know, I'll show you how that can make a difference a little bit later. So, you know, as you're pulling the string, if you're on pavement, that prop stick is going to scrape for just a split second before the trap starts to drop. This prevents that split second from happening, gives you just a little bit more of an edge. How about trapping during the nighttime? Uh, we get that question a lot. and absolutely you can do it. This is one way, which is to attach hanging lights onto the trap. It needs to be pretty bright so that you can identify, especially if you're trapping in a colony with uh, cats that are already fixed, you need to be able to see the ear tip. So you need a pretty bright light. The cats are not afraid of the lights. You can also use the headlamps of your car. 
you know, you, you would think they might be bothered by it, but most of the cats don't pay any attention at all to the light. They're only interested in the food. So go ahead and uh, feel free to use the drop trap at night. So the Tomahawk DT1 trap is designed for a certain size Tomahawk trap. The ones that are 30 by, um, I think 10 by 12 is the standard size. So their sliding rear doors are 10 by 12. So the opening on the side door of the drop trap is 10 by 12 so that the two line up perfectly, right? But what if you're using a true catch trap that's nine by 11 or the new um, gravity trap we've worked with on, uh, with Tomahawk, the GT606 that also has a rear door that's nine by 11. If you butt that up right against the side door of the drop trap, there's going to be a one inch gap. And that is, again, unfortunately from experience, we've learned that your occasional teenage kitten can actually squeeze through that. And in order to prevent that from happening, now there is an adapter, which is the piece you see in the middle. And you put that into the side door or just behind the side door of the drop trap, and it narrows the opening to nine by 11. So there's no gap for the cat to get out of. And what we do is we just attach it and we leave it there. So whatever size trap we're transferring into, that adapter is in place. Cause you know, they'll go through that. It doesn't have to be 10 by 12 matching 10 by 12. If they have to go through this adapter to get into whatever size trap, uh, it's fine. So we just leave it there. So here's a photo of how to properly install it. So you see the grooves, the tracks that the side door is going up and down, right? So you're putting this adapter in behind, very important, it's behind those grooves. It's not in the grooves or in front of them, it's behind them. Now, I believe Tomahawk has designed a way to now attach the adapter to the mainframe of the drop trap. If you're not comfortable with it or you're not feeling like secure about that, then just take a cable tie and tie the adapter onto the mainframe. Just make sure after you've done this that test the side door and make sure it goes up and down smoothly and you haven't done anything that's going to you know, block it or, or make it uh, you know, create uh, any kind of friction. That's it for this week. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. We love to hear what you think and a five-star review really helps others find the show. You can also join the conversation with listeners, cat caretakers, and me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to hit follow or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single show. Thanks for listening, and thank you for everything that you do to help create a safe and healthy world for cats. Did you attend the online kitten conference in June? We hope you enjoyed the incredible content provided by our expert presenters and hope their guidance and encouragement will help you turn your passion for cats into action. Events like the Online Kitten Conference would not be possible without the support of our generous sponsors. CDE Animal Cages, Best Friends Animal Society, Zinzi Pie Save My Pet ID Tag, Humane Network, Feline Fix by Five, and Cat Savant. If your business or organization would like to support content that makes a difference for cats in communities worldwide, visit communitycatspodcast.com slash event dash sponsorship.